Ladies and gentlemen, two weeks ago um, I had a phone call with Marek to go through the topics I would like to discuss today. After this phone call of more than one hour, I was already convinced of the added value of this conference. After the morning session, I'm even more convinced of it. During the phone call I had with Marek, I told him it was, I was pleasantly surprised about the well-founded comments the Labour Mobility Initiative Association has to the revision of the Posting of Workers Directive. And I will also start my presentation by giving some of the comments they have to discuss them further afterwards. You will notice that I agree with almost all their comments, but of course they are sitting in front of me, so I can do not otherwise. However, I have one important remark. The work construction or construction sector industry is only mentioned once, and this is only a footnote. I'm afraid that most of the discussion on the topic of social dumping and job displacement is concentrated within the sector of activity. Perhaps a missed opportunity. Certainly because also within the construction sector there is a lot of misperception about the impact of posting. But of course, we cannot narrow the use of posting to only the construction industry. The association had made two important remarks. First, the commission and in its impact assessment juggles with data. And even the commission in its impact assessment confirms, admits that it, there is a lack of appropriate data. Secondly, they say there is no focus on the potential economic impact. So based on these two conclusions, you would might think, well, there are no data available on to discuss this topic. Well, this is certainly not the case. Before 2014, almost no data on this topic, on the coordination of social security rules, but also on the posting of workers directive were available. In 2014, on the basis of Article 91 of the regulation, the Commission, and in particular DG Employment took the initiative to collect data by the Administrative collect, uh, Commission. The questionnaires, as well as the reports, are provided by the network statistics on free movement, social security coordination, and fraud and error. So we are included in this specific statistical network. Also, all branches of social security coordination are uh, included, so also we collect Figures on, for an example, the export of family benefits, aggregation of unemployment benefits. So I think this was a very important, useful decision of the Commission to collect such data. Certainly also in the light of the announced labor mobility package. One of the reports published is the one on the collection of portable document A1. Portable document E1 is a formal statement on the applicable social security legislation. It proves that a posted worker or a posted employed in more than uh, a person employed in more than one member state pays social security contribution in another member state. So the form is not only issued to posted workers. That's important also for the debate. Furthermore, and it's also uh, already mentioned uh, in the morning session, the number cannot be considered as a precise figure concerning the actual number of postings taking place. When you have a look at the questionnaire of portable document, uh, at the portable document A1 questionnaire, there are several interesting indicators. So we have a view on the type of activity, status, sector of economic activity, and we included last year also uh, the indicator unique person and also duration. And it was already mentioned by Marek that the indicator unique person is, I think, a very important one. Namely, the number of portable documents A1 issued is not necessarily equal to the number of persons involved. Several portable documents A1 could be issued to the same person during the reference year. And also, 
the duration is important to count the number of posted workers in full-time equivalents. But we cannot look only at the A1 questionnaire. You also have to look at the national registration tools. Very interesting. Also because there you have the impression that there is more posting compared to the number of, uh, when you count the number of A1 documents. For instance, you have a national registration tool in Belgium called Limosa. Also in France, Déclaration Préalable de Détachement. And there are some interesting indicators within Limosa. So you have a view on the number of declaration, but as you know, the number of unique persons are more important, but also on the number of unique employers and the number of unique clients, contractors, native contractors. But we not only count the number of posted workers, it's also important to look at Yes, at the additional data to analyze the economic impact. And there we can look at figures from Eurostat, UECD, and for instance, also the European Economic Forecast. So a lot of sources are available, but not of them are well uh, exploited at this moment. Let's have a look at the figures. Well, based on the A1 report for residents year 2014, you could make a first typology of posting of workers. Of course, in absolute terms, you know it better than me, uh, Poland has uh, issued the most uh, portable documents A1. But I'm still in favor on to compare it to the total number of employed persons, so express it in relative terms. And there you observe that the main sending uh, country is Slovenia, the main receiving country is Belgium. Another misperception is that there is only a flow from EU 30 member state to EU 15 member state. Well, that is not the case. It's also across the EU 15 member states. As already mentioned, the construction sector is uh, very important in this discussion. You immediately observe also the figure of 44% of the total portable documents A1 are issued to the specific construction uh, to the specific, uh, specific sector of activity. Uh, finally, also 8% of the posted persons are self-employed. Another indi uh, important indicator, because uh, these persons are not covered by the directive, so the proposal will not have an impact to these specific persons. 8%, uh, when we look at, for instance, Limosa, it's even 20%. As I mentioned, already mentioned, comparing forms with uh, persons, well, this is not the best indicator. So we always say it, it's not even 0.7% on the basis of A1. You have to look at the number of unique persons and then it's equal to 0.4%. When you also add the full-time equivalent, it's even equal to 0.2%. I think your conclusion is misperception about the discussion. Why such a low percentage cannot have a negative or even a positive impact on the labor uh, markets. So why such a debate on social dumping and um, job displacement? Well, some member states, and within these member states, some specific sector, in particularly the construction industry, are in the relative forms, uh, terms confronted with a significantly high uh, percentage of outgoing and incoming posted workers. So most of the time from a sending perspective, it's from Slovenia, Poland, Croatia, Hungary, and Estonia. From a receiving perspective, it's more Belgium, Austria, and Germany. When you take a look at the uh, national regulation tools and use these specific figures, you observe that uh, about 5% of the share of uh, the construction sector exists on um, posted workers. This is also the case in Germany, and it's even 10% for Denmark. But especially, the Belgian construction sector has been confronted with a major impact of posting. 
about 30% of the employment in the Belgian construction sector could be related to posted workers. Moreover, the share of posting in the employment of the Belgian construction sector has doubled between 2011 and 2014. But at the same time, there's also a lot of self-employment, perhaps even bogus self-employment. Let's have a look um, at the economic impact of posting. So we all know it, the negative connotation of posting leading to so social dumping, um, job displacement. I think it should be confronted with the economic value of, of it for both sending and receiving a member state. Because I think there is a lot of misperception and you have to tackle this misperception. First of all, I think we are confronted with a dual employer's market. Domestic main contractors benefit from it. I think this is totally forgotten in the current uh, debate. It's demand driven. So also the native, most of the time, main contractor benefit from it. So you have to look at the profile of these specific native contractors who made use of it and the others who didn't make use of it. We recently also started a research project for the Belgium construction sector, which connects Limosa data with the financial and economic data of the native contractors. And I hope to present you, hopefully also next year, these results. Another question we have, and also a misperception, that there is job displacement in the total uh, construction sector. Again, this is not the case. So we really need an analysis of the subsector and also of the jobs within the construction sector and have a look which jobs are influenced by job displacement and whether and others normally are not influenced. So then we can make a more balanced judgment also on the displacement effects. It's also important, of course, not only from a sending uh, from a receiving perception, but also from a sending perspective. I always consider it as a tool to support adjustment to a negative economic shock, a tool to stimulate intra-EU competition, a tool to increase the household income of posted workers, and e perhaps even with uh, the proposal to revise the posting of workers directive, it will even lead to a higher income and also a tool to create social convergence. The discussion on social dumping we already had in the morning session. The only thing I would like to say is that I think we should make a clear distinction between social dumping and social and fiscal fraud. Let's have a look to the next slide. Well, the ambition is equal, based on the proposal, equal pay for equal work before taxes. In order to level the playing field, which um, there is still a lot of work to do. So not only potential wage differences, but also differences in social security rates and corporate income tax rates among sending and receiving member states will determine the competitive advantage or even disadvantage. It will result in a competitive advantage even in case of equal gross wages among native and posted workers. So I was rather surprised to read that the revision will cost a lot of jobs because next to the uh, directives 96, you have also other tools, I think, that could also, are also important for the competitive advantage of posted uh, firms. Let's have a look to the competitive advantage. Again, um, differences in tax rates are considered as an important driver for uh, posted. Well, the average tax wedge of the EU 13 is quite similar to the average tax wedge of the EU 15. 
And even there is no correlation between differences in social security contributions and the share of outgoing posted workers in total employment. There, so there are also other important drivers than only differences in taxes. When you look at the displacement effects, well, some member states are indeed confronted with displacement effect in the construction sector. Before, below the horizontal aches, there is a displacement effect, and this is even more problematic if there is at the same time a negative relationship between nat native employment and the investment in construction. An important conclusion is that the evolution of the turnover and the value added of construction firms is strongly influenced by the evolution of the investment in the sector. So it nuances at the same time also the impact of posting. And even with the huge impact of, posted, of posting, we observe that the native employers of the receiving member state still make profit, still have a positive added value. Important conclusion. Furthermore, you would expect, based on the huge impact of posting, based on the calculation of A1 of, for instance, also national registration tool, that there will be a negative impact also on the collected social security contribution in the main receiving member state. This is not the case. So there is no negative impact because, okay, posting is one important element in in this discussion, but also economic growth plays, plays here an important role. Finally, I would like to conclude uh, to focus on the economic value of posting for sending countries. The ability of posting to increase export of services, to increase employment, to decrease unemployment, to increase household incomes, labor tax revenues in the sending member states are important features. For instance, it's even for the EU 13 member state equal to 1.4% of total labor tax revenues. Labor tax revenues would decrease by 80% in Poland if these, if these workers would not be posted but employed in Poland. This is of course the result of an important flow of posted workers towards higher wage member states. Therefore, labor mobility, and in particular posting, could be considered as an adjustment mechanism to solve an econ a negative economic shock. I always consider posting as a potential adjustment mechanism for the current dire economic and financial situation in Greece. However, the most recent bailout program did not include such a stabilizer perhaps a missed opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my presentation with the conclusion, the more we know about posting, the more and the better we can discuss it. I hope my presentation has contributed to it. Many thanks for your attention. <laughs>